Hi guys, and so for our Wednesday discussion, we are going to be reading 265 and 280. So let's get started. And remember, we are looking at uh, August's point of view, and they are in the woods for their field trip, overnight stay. Alien. We headed back. We headed back the way we came, in the direction of the giant screen. That's when we walked straight into a group of kids we didn't know. They just come out of the woods doing stuff I'm not sure what. I'm not sure they didn't. Oh. They just got done doing stuff I'm sure they didn't want their teachers to know about. I can smell the smoke now. The smell of both firecrackers and cigarettes. Naughty kids. They pointed their flashlight at us. There were six of them, four boys and two girls. They looked like they were in the seventh grade. What school are you from? One of the boys called out. Breacher Prep, Jack started to answer. When all of a sudden, one of the girls started screaming, Oh my God! She shrieked, holding her hand over her eyes like she was crying. I figured maybe a huge bug had flown into her face or something. No way! One of the boys cried out and started flicking his hand in the air like something touched something like he just touched something hot then he covered his mouth no freaking way man no freaking way all of a sudden all of them started half laughing and half covering their eyes and now pushing each other and cursing loudly what is it said the kid who was pointing the flashlight at us at and it was only then I realized that the flashlight was pointing right at my face. And what they were talking about and screaming about was me. Let's get out of here, Jack said to me quietly. And he pulled me by my sweatshirt sleeve and started walking away from them. Wait, 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 yelled the guy with the flashlight cutting us off. He pointed his flashlight right at my face again. And now he was only about five feet away. Oh man, oh man, he said shaking his head and his mouth open what happened to your face stop it eddie said one of the girls i didn't know we were watching lord of the rings tonight he said look out guys it's gollum gollum this made his friends hysterical again we tried to walk away from them and again the kid named eddie cut us off he was at least a head taller than Jack, who was about a head taller than me. So the guy looked huge to me. The guy looked huge to me. No, man, it's an alien, said one of the other kids. No, no, man, it's an orc, laughed Eddie, pointing at his flashlight in my face again. This time, he was right in front of us. Leave him alone, okay, said Jack, pushing the hand, holding the flashlight away. Make me, answered Eddie, pointing the flashlight in Jack's face now. What's your problem, dude, said Jack. Your boyfriend's my problem. Jack, let's go, I said, pulling him by the arm. Oh, man, it talks, screamed Eddie, shining the flashlight in my face again. Then one of the other guys threw a firecracker at our feet. Jack tried to push past Eddie, but Eddie shoved his hands on Jack's shoulder and pushed him hard, which made Jack fall backwards. Eddie, screamed one of the girls. Look, I said, stepping in front of Jack, holding my hands in front of the air like tra uh, like a traffic cop. We're a lot smaller than you guys. You talking to me, Freddy Krueger? I don't think you want to mess with me, you ugly freak, said Eddie. And this was the point where I knew I should run away as fast as I could. But Jack was still on the ground, and I wasn't about to leave him. Yo, dude said a new voice behind us. What's up, man? Eddie spun around and pointed his flashlight towards the voice. For a second, I couldn't believe who it was. Leave him alone, dude, said Amos with Miles and Henry right behind him. Say who, said one of the guys with Eddie. Just leave him alone, dude, Amos repeated calmly. You're a freak too, said Eddie. They're all a bunch of freaks, said one of his friends. Amos didn't answer them but looked at us come on guys let's go mr tushman's waiting for us i knew that was a lie but i helped jack up and we started walking over to amos then out of the blue eddie 
The Eddie guy grabbed my hood as I passed him and yanked it really hard so I was pulled backwards flat on my back. It was a hard fall. I hurt my elbow pretty bad on a rock. I didn't really see what happened except that Amos rammed into the guy Eddie like a monster truck and they both fell down onto the ground next to me. Everything got really crazy after that. Someone pulled me up by my sleeve and yelled, run! And someone else screamed, get him! And at the same time, for a few seconds, I actually had two people pulling on my sleeves and my sweatshirt in opposite directions. I heard them both cursing until my sweatshirt ripped and the first guy yanked me by my arm and started pulling me behind him as he ran, which I did as fast as I could. I could hear footsteps just behind us chasing us and voices shouting and the girls screaming, but it was dark. I didn't know whose voices they were, only that everything else felt like we were underwater. We were running like crazy and it was pitch black and whenever I started to slow down, the guy pulling me, my arm, would yell, don't stop. <sighs> voices in the dark. Finally. After what seemed like forever of running, someone yelled, I think we lost them. Amos? I'm right here, said Amos' voice a few feet behind us. We can't stop, Miles yelled from further up. Jack, I yelled. Whoa, said Jack, I'm here. I can't see anything. Are you sure we lost them? Henry letting go of my arm. When That's when I realized that he had been the one who was pulling me as we ran. Yeah, shh, let's listen. We all got super quiet, listening for footsteps in the dark. We all could hear the, all we could hear were the crickets and the frogs and our own crazy painting, pat, panting. We were out of breath, stomachs hurting, bodies bent over our knees. We lost them, said Henry. Whoa, that was intense. What happened to the flashlight? I dropped it. How did you know? How did... You guys know, said Jack. We saw them before. They look like jerks. You just rammed into him, I said to Amos. I know, right? Amos laughed. He didn't even see it coming, said Miles. He was like, you're a freak too. And I was like, bam, said Jack. Bam, said Amos, throwing a fake punch in the air. But after I tackled him, I was like, run, Amos, you smug, he's ten times bigger than you. And I got up and started running as fast as I could. We all started laughing. I grabbed Augie like, and was like, run, said Henry. I didn't even know it was you pulling me, I answered. That was wild, said Amos, shaking his head. Totally wild. Your lip is bleeding, dude. I got a couple of good punches, answered Amos, wiping his lip. I think they were seventh graders. They were huge losers, Henry shouted really loudly, but we all we all slushed him. We listened for seconds to make sure no one had heard him. Where the heck are we? said Amos. I can't even see the screen. I think we're in the cornfields, answered Henry. Duh, we're in the cornfields, said Mile, pushing the cornstalk at Henry. Okay, I know exactly where we are, said Amos. We have to go back in this direction. That'll take us to the other side of the field. Yo, dude, said Jack, hand high in the air. That's really cool of you guys to come back for us. Really cool, thanks. No problem, answered Amos, high-fiving Jack. And then Miles and Henry high-fived him too. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I'm getting stuffy. Yeah, dudes, thanks. I said, holding my palm like Jack just had, just had, though I wasn't sure if they'd high five me too. Amos looked at me and nodded. It was cool how you stood your ground, little dude. He said, high fiving me. Yeah, Augie, Augie said, Miles, high fiving me too. You were like, you're littler. We're littler than you guys. I didn't know what to say. I laughed. Very cool, Henry, he said, high fi and he high-fived me too. Sorry, I ripped your sweatshirt. I looked down at my sweatshirt. It was completely torn down the middle. One sleeve was ripped off, and the other was so stretched out, it was hanging down my knees. Hey, your elbow's bleeding, said Jack. Yeah, I shrugged. It's starting to hurt a lot. You okay, said Jack, seeing my face? I nodded. Suddenly, I felt like crying. 
I was trying really hard not to do that. Wait, your hearing aids are gone, said Jack. What? I yelled, touching my ears. My hearing aid band was definitely gone. That's why I felt like I was underwater. Oh no, I said. That's when I couldn't hold it anymore. Everything that had happened kind of hit me, and I couldn't help it. I just started crying. Like a big, like big crying, what mom would call the waterworks. I was so embarrassed, I hid my face in my arm, but I couldn't stop the tears from coming. The guys were really nice to me, though. They patted me on my back. You're okay, dude. It's okay, they said. You're one brave little dude. You know that, said Amos, putting his arm around my shoulder. Then, oh, and when I kept on crying, he put both arms around me like my dad would have done and let me cry. The Emperor Guard. Where we backtracked through the grass for a good ten minutes to see if we can find my hearing aids, but it was way too dark to see anything. We literally had to hold on to each other's shirt and walk in a single file line so we wouldn't trip over one another. It was like black ink had poured all around. This is hopeless, said Henry. We, they could it they could be anywhere. Maybe we can come back with a flashlight, answered Amos. No, it's okay, I said. Let's just go back. Thanks, though. We walked back towards the cornfield, then cut through until we got the big back at the giant screen into view. Since, since it was facing away from us, we didn't get any light from the screen at all until we walked into the edge of the woods again. That's where we finally started to see a little light. There was no sign of the seventh graders anywhere. Where do you think they went, said Jack. Back to the food truck, said Amo. They're probably thinking about, probably thinking we're going to report them. Are we, asked Aim Henry. They looked at me. I shook my head. Okay, said Amos. But little dude, don't walk around here alone again, okay? If you, if you need to go somewhere, tell us and we'll go with you. Okay, I nodded. As we got closer to the screen, I could hear high on hill was a lonely gothard, and I could smell cotton candy from one of the concession stands near the food truck. There were a lot of kids milling around this area, so I pulled what I what was left of my hoodie over my head, and I kept my face down and my hands in my pocket. We, as we made our way through the crowd, it had been a long time since I had been without my hearing aids, and I felt like I was miles under the earth. It felt like the song that Sal Miranda used to sing to me, ground control to the major tom, your circuit's dead, there's something, there's something wrong. I did notice as I walked that Amos had to, had stayed right next to me and Jack was close on the other side of me and Miles was in front and Henry was in back of us. They were surrounding me as we walked through the crowds of kids like they had their like I had my own emperor's guard. Sleep. Then they came out of the narrow valleys at once she saw the reasons. There stood Peter and Edmond and the rest of Alsan's army fighting desperately against the crowd of horrible creatures whom she'd seen last night only now in daylight they'd look over look even stranger and more evil and more deformed i stopped there i'd been reading for over an hour and sleep still didn't come it was almost 2 a.m everyone else was sleeping was asleep I had my flashlight under my sleeping bag and maybe the light was why I couldn't sleep. But I was too afraid to turn it off. I was afraid of how dark it was outside outside of the, outside the sleeping bag. When we got back to our section in front of the movie screen, no one even noticed we were gone. Mr. Tishman and Miss Rubin and Summer and all the rest of the kids were just watching the movie. They had no clue something bad had almost happened to me and Jack. It's so weird how that can be, how you could have had a night that's worse in your life, but to everyone else, it was just an ordinary night. Like, on my calendar at home, I would mark this as being one of the most horrific days of my life. This and the day Daisy died. But for the rest of the world, it was just an ordinary day, or maybe it was even a good day. 
Maybe somebody won the lottery today. Amos, Miles, and Henry brought me and Jack over where they'd been sitting before with Summer and, and Maya and Reed. And then they went and sat where they had been sitting before. And Zaina... Zamina? Hey, Zamina. I don't know. And Savannah and their group. In a way, everything was exactly exactly where we had left it before. We went looking for the toilets. The sky was the same. The movie was the same. Everyone's faces were the same. Mine was the same. But something was different. Something had changed. I could see Amos and Miles and Henry telling their group what had just happened. I knew they were talking about it because they kept looking over at me while they were talking. Even though the movie was still playing, people were whispering in the dark. News like this spreads fast. It was, it was what everyone was talking about on the bus on the ride back to the cabins. All the girls, even girls I didn't know very well, were asking me if I was okay. The boys were all talking about getting revenge on the group of the 7th grade jerks trying to figure out what school they were from. I wasn't planning on telling the teachers about any of what had happened, but they found out anyway. Maybe it was the torn sweatshirt or and the bloody elbow. Or maybe it's just that teachers hear everything. We hear everything. When we got back to the camp, Mr. Tishman took me back to the first aid office. And while I was getting my elbow cleaned up and bandaged up by the camp nurse, Mr. Tishman and the camp director were in the next room talking with Amos and Jack, Henry and Miles, trying to get a description of the troublemakers. When he asked me about them a little later, I said I couldn't remember their faces at all, which wasn't true. It's their faces I kept seeing every time I closed my eyes and slept to sleep. The look of total horror on the girl's face when when she first saw me, the way the kid with the flashlight Eddie looked at me as he talked to me and like he hated me like a lamb to slaughter. I remember dad saying that years ago, but tonight I think Oh, I remember I remember dad saying that ages ago, but tonight I think I finally got what he meant. The aftermath. Mom was waiting for me in front of the school along with all the other parents when the bus arrived. Mr. Tishman told me on the bus ride home that they had called my parents to tell them that there had been a situation. Uh, sorry guys. Mr. Tishman had told me on the bus ride home that they had called my parents to tell them that there had been a situation the night before, but everyone was fine. He said the camp director and several of the counselors went looking for the hearing aids that morning while, all, while we all went swimming in the lake, but they couldn't find them anywhere. Borwood would reimburse us for the cost of the hearing aids, he said. They felt bad about what happened. I wondered if Eddie had taken my hearing aids with him as a kind of souvenir. Something like remembering the orc. Mom gave me a tight hug when I got off the bus, but she didn't slam me with questions like I thought she might. Her hug felt good, and I didn't shake it off like some of the other kids were doing with their parents' hugs. The bus driver started unloading our duffel bags, and I went to find mine while Mom talked to Mr. Tishman and Miss Rubin, who had walked over to her. As I rolled my bag towards her, a lot of the kids who usually don't say anything to me were nodding hello and patting my back as I walked by them. Ready? Mom said when she saw me. She took my duffel bag, and I didn't even try to hold it in. I was fine with her carrying it. If she had wanted to carry me on her shoulders, I would have been fine with that too, to be truthful. We started to walk away. Mr. Tishman gave me a quick, tight hug, but didn't say anything. Home. Mom and I talked, didn't talk much the whole walk home. And when we got to the front stoop, I automatically looked in the front bay window because I forgot for a second that Daisy wasn't going to be there like she always preached on 
perched on the sofa with her front paws on the window sill, waiting for us to come home. It made me kind of sad when we walked inside. As soon as we did, Mom dropped my duffel bag and we and wrapped her arms around me and kissed me on my head and my face like she was breathing me in. It's okay, Mom. I'm fine, I said, smiling. She nodded and took her face in her hands. Her eyes were shiny. I know you are, she said. I miss you so much, Augie. I missed you, too. I could tell she wanted to say a lot of things, but she stopped herself. Are you hungry, she asked. I'm starving. Can I have a grilled cheese? Of course, she answered, and immediately started to make a sandwich while I took... Well, I took my jacket off and sat down on the kitchen counter. Where's Via? I asked. She's coming home with Dad today. Boy, did she miss you, Augie, Mom said. Yeah, she would have liked the nature reserve. You know the movie they played? The Sound of Music. You'll have to tell her that. So, do you want to hear about the bad part or the good part first? I asked after a few minutes, leaning my head, head on my hand. Whatever you want to talk about, she answered. Well, except for last night. I had an awesome time, I said. I mean, it was just awesome. That's why I'm so bummed. I feel like they ruined the whole trip for me. No, sweetie, don't let them do that to you. You were there for more than 48 hours, and the awful part only lasted one hour. Don't let them take that away from you, okay? I know, I nodded. Did Mr. Tishman tell you about the hearing aids? Yes, he called this morning. Was Dad mad because they were so expensive? Oh, gosh, no. Of course not, Augie. He wanted to know that you were all right. That's all that matters to us. Then that you didn't get those, and you didn't let those thugs ruin your trip. I kind of laughed the way she used the word thugs. What? She asked. Thugs, I teased her. That's kind of old-fashioned word. Okay, jerks, morons, imbecile, she said, flapping, flipping over the sandwich in the pan. Um, as mom would have said, uh, crentos, as mom would have said, whatever you want to call them, I saw them on the, if I saw them on the street, I would, she shook her head. They're pretty big, mom. I smiled, seventh graders, I think. She shook her head. Seventh graders? Mr. Tishman didn't tell me that. Oh my goodness. Did he tell you how Jack stood up for me, I said? And Amos was like, bam, and rammed him right into the leader. Uh, they both crashed to the ground like in a real fight. It was pretty awesome. Amos' lip was bleeding everywhere. He told us there was a fight, but she said, looking at me with her eyebrows raised, I'm just... Whew. I'm just so grateful you, Amos, and Jack are fine. When I think about what could have happened, she trailed off flipping the grilled cheese again. My Montauk hoodie totally got shredded. Well, that can be well that can be replaced, she answered. She lifted the grilled cheese into a plate and put the plate in front of me on the counter. Milk or white grape juice? Chocolate milk, please. I started devouring the sandwich. Oh, can you do it the special way? You make it with froth? How did you and Jack end up at the edge of the woods in the first place, she said, pouring the milk into the tall glass. Jack had to go to the bathroom. I answered my mouthful. As I, as I was talking, she spooned chocolate powder and started rolling a small whisk between her palms really fast. But there was a huge line, and he didn't want to wait, so he went towards the woods to pee. She looked right at me while she was whisking. I know she, what she was. I know she was thinking we shouldn't have done that. Chocolate milk in the glass now had two inches of froth on top. That looks good, Mom. Thanks. And then what happened? She said, putting the glass in front of me. I took a long drink of chocolate m milk. Is it is it okay if we don't talk about it anymore right now? Oh, okay. I promise to tell you about it later when Dad and Via come home. I'll tell you every detail. I just don't want to have to tell the whole story over and over, you know? Absolutely. 
I finished my sandwich in two more bites and gulped down the chocolate milk. Wow, you practically inhaled that sandwich. Do you want another one, she said. I shook my head and wiped my mouth with the back of my hand. Mom, am I always going to have to worry about jerks like that, I asked. Like, when I grow up, is it always going to be like this? She didn't answer right away, but she took my plate and and glass and put them in the sink and rinsed the water rinse them with the water there's always going to be jerks in the world augie she said looking at me but i really believe and daddy really believes that there are more good people on this earth than bad people and good people watch out for each other and take care of each other just like jack was there for you and amos and the other kids oh yeah miles and henry i answered they are they were awesome too it's weird because Miles and Henry haven't even been really nice to me all during the year. Sometimes people surprise us, she said, rubbing the top of her head. I guess. Want another glass of chocolate milk? No, I'm good. Thanks, Mom. Actually, I kind of, I'm kind of tired. I didn't sleep too good last night. You should take a nap. Thanks for leaving me, ba Babu, by the way. You got my note? She smiled. I slept with him both nights. She was about to say something else when her cell phone rang and she answered and she started beaming. Oh my goodness, really? What kind? Yes, exactly. He's right here. He was about to take a nap. Want to say hi? Oh, okay. See you in two minutes and she clicked off. That was daddy, she said excitedly. He and Via are just down the block. He's not at work, I said. He left early because he didn't. He couldn't wait to see you, she said. So don't take a nap quite yet. Five seconds later, Dad and Via came through the door. I ran into Dad's arms and he picked me up and spun me around and kissed me. He didn't let me go for a full minute until I said, it's oh, Dad, it's okay. And then it was Via's turn, and she kissed me all over like she used to when I was little. It wasn't until she stopped that I noticed the big white cardboard box that they had brought in with them. What is that, I said. Open it, Dad said, smiling. And he and Mom looked down at each other that, like they knew the secret. Come on, Augie, said Via. I opened the box. Inside was the cutest little puppy I've ever seen in my life. It was black and furry with pointy, with a pointy little snout and bright black eyes and small ears that flopped down. Okay, guys, remember to check out our discussion post, um, and I will see you in class. Bye.